so guys let us have a code walk through how to implement a single threaded server so on the right hand side you can see a black screen and we will going to have a code walk through completely in c the entire course our entire course is in c so welcome you are seeing the first code snippet in this course so let's start with the in the main function we are just invoking the setup tcp server communication function so or, uh, so the entire uh, tcp server logic implementation is done in this function so let's come to this function so uh, let me first uh, describe this so these are the header files that you must include to carry out uh, tcp socket programming in c so these are the standard header file like sysocket.h netinet.h netdb.h memory.h you know it's for malloc alloc and all that stuff and common.h it is not a standard header file it is our own header file so let's see that uh, we have defined two structure so what we are going to actually implement in this logic so this is a very simple client server communication example so the example that we are going to implement is like this you have a client c client c sends its common its uh, connection request to the server s the functionality of server s is that it takes two numbers a and b it adds the two numbers and returns the result c to the client c is the result so c has to send the connection request to the server s first second c has to send its data to the server that is a and b the server having received the connection request from c it will establish the connection with the client and in addition server will read the data sent by the client c that is a and b it perform operation addition operation on the values a and b it computes the result c and send back to the client so we will going to study the entire tcp client server communication using this ba very basic example right so we have defined a very basic data structure very basic structure that is test struct dot p this one if you see the definition of this structure it is nothing but a and b the values that client will send to the server and then we have result structure in which the server will send the result that is the addition of the values a and b back to the client in variable c so these are the two basic structures that we have defined for this example also you can see that we have a server port here so we will going to uh, establish we will going to start a server on the port number 2000 that is our server is listening on port number 2000 and what will be the ip address of our server since our server is running locally on our machine we will going to assign the ip address to the server which is 127.0.0.1 which is a local ip address that is our own machine ip address we have also taken the data buffer the data buffer of 1024 bytes the data buffer will be used to uh, by, uh, it will be used by the server to receive any data coming from any client in our case we have only one client so to store the data of the client the server needs some memory so we will so we have used the global variable of 1024 bytes on the server side so let's start so within the function these are some local variable of course you need to have a master socket file descriptor and for that you need to take a integer variable that is master socket file descriptor and the rest of the variables we will discuss their usage as we go through the code so as i have already discussed that that the server when it will receive the client request uh, when it will receive the connection request from the client the uh, server will going to create a communication file descriptor so you have to take a variable of communication file descriptor also then uh, this is the read file descriptor set which we discussed we will see how we will going to use this in our code then server has also has to define two variables that is server address in server address the server will define its own ip address actually server will save its own information that is own ip address and own port number on which the server is listening and whenever a client comes and connect to the server 
the server needs to store that which client has come uh, which client has actually connected to the server that information will be stored in this structure that is client access so 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 far we have only defined the local variables that we will be using now so the first step is initializing initialization of local variables on the server side now in the step 2 that is the first thing the server you are you are doing on the server side is that invoke the socket system call and using socket system call you are creating a master socket file descriptor that is your server is becoming ready to accept new connection from the client so if we study the argument of the socket uh, uh, call uh, socket system call the first argument is constant which is af underscore inet it means that you are carrying out communication for ipv4 network so as you can see the 90 99% of the networks in the world is ipv4 network so you need not bother what other values you can pass here so you just pass af underscore inet for your information if you are carrying out ipv6 communication that is communication on the ipv6 network then you have to pass here af underscore inet 6 right so these are the two most popular values that uh, that uh, we we use is there are other values that are possible it depends on the type of socket and the type of communication you are carrying out in our example we are going to use only ipf underscore inet in all examples the second argument that you pass to the socket system call is the socket stream socket stream means it is a tcp server it's a tcp socket file descriptor okay? that is the underlying protocol that is used to carrying out communication between the server and the client is nothing but tcp and there is a 101 mapping between the second argument and the third argument if the, se if the second argument is socket stream then the third argument is ip proto tcp right the protocol type is ip proto tcp so the other values the other so it is the most widely used uh, values are tcp and the other type of socket that is more widely used is the UDP. So if it is a UDP socket, you will type here soc underscore UDP. And here you will type IP proto underscore UDP. If you pass these two values, then the socket that you will going to establish is UDP. And so you are establishing UDP communication with the client. But in our case, we have taken a TCP as, as an example. So we will pass socket stream and IP proto TCP. You are advised to, after this example, you are advised to go browse the internet and see how UDP socket has been created. The steps of creating a UDP socket and carrying out UDP client server communication is much simpler as compared to TCP. So we are already taking a harder example. So having said that the socket system call is completed and the server has created your master socket file descriptor it means that your server is now ready to receive the new clients connection request now you also have to tell that on which port number your server is listening and what is the socket type your server has opened that is for which type of communication so in our example as i have said <laughs> carrying out ipv4 communication so we have the structure server abdr which we defined here we will we'll now going to fill this server with the uh, we will going to fill this uh, local variable with the server information so we have a server abdr inside this structure we have a member same family so this is the address family is if underscore inf which we have already discussed your server is listening on the port number 2000 so this is the constant server port which we have defined above its value is 2000 in the our case so our server is listening on port number 2000 and i have already discussed that what is the significance of port number the operating system identifies the application uniquely and which is listening on port number 2000 any port uh, any packet that is incoming into your machine with the destination port equal to 2000 will going to be delivered to our server because our server is listening on port number 2000 right so we have assigned the port number to our server now it's time to assign an ip address to our server 
because client needs an IP address and port number of our server to, uh, to send the connection request to our server. So in our case, we have taken any in ADR, any is a constant that is defined in one of our header file. So the operating system will assign the operating system will assign an a random IP address, not actually random, it will assign an IP address to our server and that IP address is local IP address to one of the interface that our server has. So you should understand that how does a server actually is. A server is a machine which can have multiple interfaces. So suppose the IP address of this interface is 192.168.1.1. The IP address of this interface is 192.168 and 1.2 and similarly the IP address of this interface is 192.168.1.2 so if you specify in ADDR any it means any packet with destination address is equal to IP address of any interface of the server then that packet the operating system will go in to deliver that packet to our server it means our server, it means the operating system will will take any packet which have destination address is equal to 192.168.1.1 or 1.2 or 1.3 if any packet comes with any of these ip address as destination ip address and its ip header the operating system will going to accept that packet and operating system will search for the application running in the uh, running above the socket layer and see that which application is listening on port number 2000 if that application uh, since it is our server which is listening on port number 2000 so any packet with uh, so the packet with the destination IP address with any of these IP address and port number 2000 will be going to deliver to our server so that's the significance of in HDR any if you want our server application to listen on one particular IP address you, you should specify here the integer value here you can see this the integer value of that IP address so suppose you uh, specify that 192.168.1.3 and suppose it's the uh, integer equivalent value of this IP address say x so you have to specify here uh, server addr.spin addr.f addr is equal to x so only the packet with destination IP address is equal to x will going to be delivered to our server application so that's the story of in ADDR any. The next thing is the address LAN. Address LAN is nothing but it is the constant that is size of the uh, size of this uh, data type. This is the spec stock ADDR is a standard data type that is provided by one of our C header files which we discussed above. So it is just a constant that size of spec stock ADDR. So the next thing that we're going to do is bind. Now, what does bind do? So, so far we have just taken the variables that is server ADDR and we have stored the members of this variable with the server information. We have not yet told the operating system that what are the properties of our server that is which IP address and which port number our server is using. So bind is a system call that we use on the server side Using bind system call, we tell the operating system that our server is listening on port on which port number and which IP address. So that operating system will have this information and operating system any incoming packet when it is received by your operating system that is Linux kernel, the Linux kernel will know that which application running in the user space that is above the socket layer we need to deliver which packet to which application. So the bind system call, we the first argument that we pass is the master socket file descriptor. Then the second argument that we pass is the address of the server ADDR which we have just filled here with the server information. And the third argument of the bind system call is nothing but it is a constant that is the size of this standard structure. So this is simple. So after executing the bind system call, our operating system knows so our operating system knows that I have a server S, server S which is listening on, port, on IP address, IP, say IP and listening on the port number 2000. 
in our case we have just specified in ADDR n it means the operating system will assign to our server the IP address 127.0.0.1 because our server does not have any interface so by default every Linux machine has a one local interface for loopback interface whose IP address is 127.0.0.1 so any packet that has a destination IP address is equal to 127001 will going to deliver to our server. So we have studied the bind system call. It's a way of telling the operating system that hey, we have a server S which is listening on IP address IP and port number 2000. If any packet comes with the destination IP and with the destination address is equal to this IP and port number equal to this port number. Please deliver the application to my app. Please deliver the packet to my application S, which is a server. So this is the purpose of the bind system call. Then next on the listen. Listen system call is used to tell the operating system that hey, if five clients come at the same time, that is five clients request. Uh, the request from five clients comes at the same time to our machine. Please queue that request, queue those number of requests in the operating system itself. So operating system. So suppose we have a server S and client C1, C2, client C3, client C4, client C5. There could be any number of clients. We will going to implement a server which could handle multiple number of clients in the second assignment. So if the client request comes from all of these clients at the same time, the operating system will going to queue those requests, will going to put those five requests in a queue and will deliver these requests one by one to our server. So this is the purpose of the listen system call. That is here we are passing five, five and here the first argument is master software file descriptor. So five means that the size of the queue is five. Right, so so far we have covered the bind system call, listen system call. So these are the steps actually to establish a server. And these steps are definite steps. You have to follow these steps to implement a server. Going forward guys, now you can see here that we have started a while loop here. So as you know that uh, it is the property of the server that server are always up. That is they run 24 into 7. That is, they, they should always be in a position to accept the client request and if the client request is accepted, they should be in a position to communicate with the client, that is to carry out data exchange with the client. That is why you will always found that uh, a, a core server logic is always encapsulated within the infinite loop, that is while one loop. So within this loop, we will going to implement uh, a, a server logic that it is always in a position to always uh, either receive the client request, new client request for uh, communication or to exchange data with the communication. So we discussed about uh, the read file descriptor which is actually a set. So we initialize this, uh, we, we actually taken the local variable above, uh, actually not a global variable, I think we have taken it as a global variable. If you check, uh, where is that? Yeah, it's a local variable that is inside within the our function setup TCP server communication function. So we declare it as a local variable read FDS. So read FDS as we discussed earlier, read FDS is nothing but it is a set set of file descriptors which our server will going to monitor. Now, in our case, as soon as we enter into the while loop, we initialize the read FDS set to zero. That is, it doesn't have any elements inside it. It is an empty set right now. After that, fd underscore set is a macro. Actually, fd underscore zero and fd underscore is a standard macro that is given by the C library to manipulate read fds set. So in the in line 72, you can see fd underscore set. It means we are putting the master socket file descriptor inside this set. So this master socket file descriptor becomes a member of read fds now. Right? Because uh, whatever file descriptors are present in this set will be monitored by the select system call. So here we are printing that blocked on the select system call. So the next thing that we are going to do is that we are calling the select system call. As we discussed the first argument of the select system call is nothing. 
but it is the maximum numerically maximum file descriptor that is present in this read FDS set. Currently, we have only one file descriptor in this set, which is master socket file descriptor. So we can directly mention the first argument in the select system call, the master socket file descriptor plus one. And of course, the second argument is read FDS, the pointer to the read file descriptor set, which contains all the file descriptors which are to be monitored by the select system call. And the next three arguments you can specify as null, null, null. So actually your server is halt here. It will not execute beyond this point. And actually your circuit, because in the read FDS file descriptor, you have only master socket file descriptor as a member of this set. Your server is actually waiting for the new client request, right? Because it is monitoring only one file descriptor, which is master socket file descriptor, because master socket file descriptor is the only file descriptor that is present in read FDS set. And we have already discussed that uh, on the master socket file descriptor, only new client request arrives. It is not used for usual data exchange with the client. So, so as soon as suppose you have a client C and uh, there is a server S, as soon as the client send the, uh, the connection request to the server S, your select system call will get unblocked. It will execute further because in the read file descriptor, you have a master socket file descriptor which can detect new client connection request. <clears throat> so select system call is usually followed by if because you have to check that which file descriptor present in this set has actually received the data. In our case, our read file descriptor contains only one file descriptor that is master socket file descriptor. In other cases, your read FDS set may contains more than one file descriptor. Therefore, you have to check by using if then else uh, statement to check that actually which file descriptor present in this set has actually received the data. In our, course, in, in our case, we have only master socket file descriptor. So we will check using FD underscore is set macro that whether a new client connection request has arrived on this master socket file descriptor and the second argument is the pointer to the read FDS set. This condition is true. It means new connection request has arrived on the server. So we have the printf statement that new connection received accept and we are going to accept this connection and client and the server completes TCP three way handshake at this point. So we will execute the next thing after select system call and after doing if else check that which file descriptor is actually set. We call the accept system call. So accept system call will actually going to establish this connection between the client and the server and completes three way TCP handshake. <clears throat> so the synopsis of the accept system call is that first argument is always the master socket file descriptor. The second is the empty buffer, which is of the, uh, which is of the type of client ADDR. So it will going to store the client IP address as well as the port number that is the client C which is connecting to the server and this is the ADDR line which is just a constant and size of the client ADDR structure. So remember the return value of the accept system call is nothing but it is an integer value which is a communication file descriptor. So this server will going to carry out all the communication that is the data exchange with the client using communication file descriptor only. So accept system call returns value is important. It gives you the handle of the TCP IP connection between the client and the server. Of course, if the accept system call fails, then the return value is always less than zero. So you have to do a check that whether the accept system call can fail for some reasons. So going forward, after accepting the connection from the client, we are again entering into the while one loop. Now inside this loop, this what server do is that it infinitely exchange data with the client until some cert, until certain condition is specified. We will see what that condition is. So inside the while loop, you can print that server is ready to receive the client message. Now remember we have taken a buffer that is data buffer. The purpose of this data buffer is to receive the client data. So before receiving the client data, of course, we have to empty this buffer. So we are drain out this buffer using memset system call. Then after that, the server execute receive from 
receive from means the server is now waiting for the data to be received from the client whose connection has been accepted by the server that is the connection has already been established now server is waiting for the data from the client so again receive from like select system call receive from is also a blocking system call so your server will hold here until the data arrives from the client and you can see that the we are no more using master socket file descriptor in receive from function the first argument that we have passed is the communication file descriptor because communication file descriptor is used for data exchange with the client the second argument is the argument is the pointer to the data buffer on which we are going to receive the client data the third argument is the size of the buffer which we have passed and the next argument is always null you can always pass it as null it is for some advanced usage of the receive from functionality and then you can always pass the address of the client addr that is the requirement of this synopsis of the receive from system call that the second last argument is the address of the client address which is already filled this client adr data is already filled with the accept system call so this actually contains the ip address and port number of the client with which you are carrying out the communication and addr is len is nothing but it is a constant and equal to the size of this structure then we are going to execute this printf because we have received the data from the client because we have received the data from the client the server will going to unblock from the receive from and execute further now remember the return value of the receive from system call is nothing but it is a integer value which says that the number of bytes received from the client as a data so we are just checking if the number of bytes received from the client is zero it means we have received an empty data from the client so server is doing nothing but it is only wishing to close the connection with the client so use it to close the connection with the client we use a close system call and pass it in the communication file descriptor which is specific to that client and we are now breaking out of this inner while loop so when this uh, when this break execute you will see the code you can analyze the code flow that the server goes back and halt at the select system call that is it waits for the new client request so anyway let's assume that uh, the server has sent some data so this if condition is not met and so after receive from we have uh, some data which is sent by the client in this data buffer so we typecast this data buffer into the test struct the structure because remember we are going to we explained the test struct t is actually the structure which contains unsigned int a and b that is the two un unsigned integer values which the server will going to add so to read this data buffer we have to typecast this data buffer into this structure because the client has sent the data to the server in this format so again this is a, another terminating condition that if the client send the value a and b both as zero so server will accept these values a and b both equal to zero as the condition to close the socket so you can see if a and b both both values are zero the server is not adding up the two values but rather it is closing the communication file descriptor and again break it out so again let's see that the client has sent some legitimate values which are not zero to the server so this condition is false and we arrive here so this is the output structure in which the server will going to store the result and send the result back to the client so the server is adding the two values and storing the result in, to, in the result.c structure we have already explained that result struct t is nothing but it's a structure containing only one member c which will going to store the addition of the two numbers now the server has computed the result on the server side and has stored the result in result.c now server has to do nothing but send this result back to the client so you arrive here that the server send the result back to the client using send to call, send to function now send to is not a blocking call so in the first argument of the send to is again a communication file descriptor the second argument is nothing but it's a pointer to the buffer which contains the result to be sent back to the client the third argument is the size of the result buffer the fourth argument is zero that is null 
and again pass the pointer to the structure which contains the client IP address and port number and the final argument is the size of this structure. So after the send to system call execution of send to system call your server has already sent the data to the client. So we print that the server has sent percentage g bytes how much data that is the return value of the send to system call is nothing but the number of bytes sent by the server to the client. And we just print it out and then we terminate the then we close the out inner inner while loop here so actually you are inside the so your server is uh, actually stuck in the inner while loop that is it is accepting the data from the client and calculating or uh, processing the data and sending the data back to the client <coughs> So we will going to capture the entire logic on the server side with the help of a flowchart for better understanding that what logic actually we have implemented on the server side. So initially you can see that uh, the server established master socket file descriptor that is a server called the socket system call and created master socket. Server created master socket file descriptor using socket system call. After that, the server actually populate the read MTS file set using master socket file descriptor. And on that read MTS set, the server actually called the select system call that is monitoring the master socket file descriptor. And when the, collect, when the client C sends the connection request to the server S, the select system call unblocks and then the server actually call the accept system call which actually establish the connection between the client and the server. <clears throat> now after accept system call the server waited for the extra data the next data to be received from the client using receive from call and once the data is received by the server it process the data and send back the result to the client. So after sending the data to the client, the server again goes back and again hold on the receive from that is wait for the next data from the client. So this is the inner while loop. That is your server is on an infinite cycle of receiving the data from the client, process the data and send the data back to the client. If the terminating condition after processing the data that is if the server found that the data values a and b sent by the client both are zero then the server breaks in from inside the while loop and the server goes back to the select system call that is wait for the new connection request from same client or some other client it could be any client so this is the entire flowchart the entire logic that we have discussed in the in the form of program code so you have just uh, implemented your server it is a single threaded server because the entire logic has been implemented in a single thread that is the main thread and your server at a time can maintain only one client that is at a given time your server can service request of only one client. Now let us assume that your server is busy inside the inner while loop that is inside this while loop your server is busy and suppose this is the client C1 and it is carrying out data exchange with the server. So your server will be busy inside the inner while loop. Suppose there is a client C2 which again sends the new connection request to the server. Will your server going to detect this connection request? The answer is no. Because to detect a new connection request from the client C2, your server should be in a position to detect this connection request and it will be in a position when your server is halt on select system call but your server is not halting on select system call but it is rather busy inside the inner while loop so until the client c1 socket or the connection is terminated by the server or by the client itself and your server again go back to the select system call until this condition happens your server cannot detect the client request from another client. 
so in a nutshell or to summarize your, your server can service only one client at a time so let's discuss the steps that we have gone through to design our single threaded server so first of all with the starting of the code we have initialized the variables then we created the master socket using socket system call we bind the master socket then we call the listen system call then we initialize the read file descriptor and we uh, we place the master socket file descriptor inside this read fds then after that we call the select system call the blocking system call uh, and after calling the select system call our server actually blocks for the new client connection request and when the new client connection request comes the server accepts the connection using accept system call and when the accept system call is returned our server has got a handle that is communication file descriptor using that communication file descriptor our server send and receive the data from the client and when certain condition is met from the client that is when it sends a value a of b both as zero a server close the connection and then a server break out of the inner while loop and then again go to step 5 that is it reinitialize the read fds file descriptor with the master socket file descriptor and again halt at the select system call for the uh, new client connection request so our server is an infinite cycle when it finishes the servicing the request of one client it go and halt at the select system call and waits for the new connection request from the another client so this is the 10 steps that we have just followed to design our single threaded server so <clears throat> let's go through certain observations of our single threaded server so a server cannot accept the client request when it is processing the current client so that i have already explained so our server was oscillating between uh, the stages 3 and 4 that is in the stage 3 it is receiving the data and it sends the reply back to the client then again after sending the data to the client it again waits for the new data from the same client so our server is in the inner while loop between the stages 3 and 4 and we have already explained that only one client can be served at a time and the reason for serving one client at a time is that our server is busy inside the inner while loop and this kind of design is used when there is only and only one dedicated client of server so don't think that this design is bad it actually depends on the use case that is what is how what type of server you want to implement there are many scenarios in which for a given server you have only one and one client so this type of design has been extensively used in system programming where there is only one process which have to accept the request from another process the client and after processing after carrying out certain processing the server process has to send back the result to the client so uh, this type of design is useful when there is only one dedicated client to a server process process so such server processes are used in system softwares where there is only one client and one server so and uh, the server design cannot handle multiple client connections that we have already discussed and also remember that servers are nothing but it is just another process which accepts some data from another process and process the data and send back the result so don't think that server that servers are some special machine uh, special processes no they are just another process which has some capability to accept the data process the data and send back the data to the client and we already know the properties of the server that servers doesn't generate any data by themselves it just replies to the client after processing client's data server by themselves never sends message to the client without client initiation first and that is right it's a property of the server so we have already discussed that uh, we have so many drawbacks in the server that it can handle only one client request at a time so we're going to lift this drawback from our server and we will going to design redesign a server so that it can handle multiple client requests and it can service the multiple clients at the same time so in the next assignment we will going to redesign a server to lift this drawbacks from our current single threaded server so far 
I've just explained the code on the server side that how the servers are implemented. Now let us go through the code walkthrough of the TCP client.c that is how the client code is implemented. So client code is fairly easy as compared to the server code. If you can understand the server code then client code is very very easy to understand because on the client side you don't have much of the logic to implement. Client is just a process which will send its data to the server for doing carrying out certain processing and receive the data from the server receive the result from the server so we will uh, go through the quick code walkthrough of the tcp client that how we implement the client so i have opened tcp client.c we will start with the main so inside the main you can see we have just called the tcp setup tcp communication and we will implement the entire client logic inside this function so going forward so first of all the client should know the server details that is which server the client wants to connect so the client needs to know the server process port number that is the port number on which the server is listening in the network and the client also needs to know the server ip address but since uh, we are running the client and the server on the same machine for learning purpose of course so the server ip address is 127.0.0.1 that is local to your machine but server is listening on port number 2000 so the client need to know two things about the server in the network that is which will help the client process to identify the server in the network the ip address and the port number with the help of ip address the client will identify that on which machine on the network the server process is running and on that particular machine once the machine has been identified on that machine which process is the server process to which our client wants to connect for that we have a port number because on that machine there could be multiple servers running so we need to identify which particular server process we want to connect and for that client needs to know the port number so going forward this is the function setup tcp communication so we will need to have some local variables that is socket file descriptor and the send receive bytes then again address line is just a constant which is size of struct socket ddr structure and then the client has to declare the struct socket ddr underscore in destination type of structure in which the client will going to feed the server's ip address and port number inside this structure so the next step will going to populate this structure so inside this structure we have a member called dot sin family which is nothing but af underscore inet i have already explained that because we are carrying out ipv4 communication between the client and the server therefore we just specify address family underscore inet then the second member inside the dest the structure is the port number of the server which is a constant dest port which we have already has defined here 2000 then the next two steps you have to follow to specify the server ip address so inside the server ip address you just have to use this line inside that just pass the server ip address which we have already defined here server ip address in the form of a string and get host by name is the function that you need to use then uh, you have to capture the return value of this function inside struct host and host and then in the next line just pass the host arrow h addr member typecast it in struct in addr star and followed by and you have to capture the value of uh, this server address in dash dot sin addr so line 40 and 41 actually are the two steps to specify the server ip address in dest variable dest dot sin addr variable so you don't have to go and dig deep into this function that what does this use just you can learn the steps that struct host and star host is equal to typecast the return value of get host by name into struct host and star structure then so inside the dest structure you have specified the server ip address you have specified the server port number as well as the sin family that is these three details are required now your client knows which server it wants to connect so your client is in a position to create a socket so to create a socket 
this is the synopsis of the socket which we have already discussed past the address family that is what type of socket you want to create what type of communication you want to create you want to uh, carry out tcp communication so pass a soft stream and the third argument is ip proto tcp so this socket system call will return socket file descriptor please remember that there is no concept of master socket file descriptor on the client side the client will going to carry out all the data exchange directly on this socket file descriptor so now the client has a handle to the communication with the server that is the socket file descriptor now your client wants to connect to the server so the connection request from the client will go to the server when you call the connect system call it is a non blocking system call so either it will have succeed or it will fail but it will not block so the first argument just pass the socket file descriptor which you have received from the socket system call in the second argument pass the dash structure which contains the ip address and the port number of the server which the client wants to connect the third argument is the size of this structure so after the execution of the line number 48 that is connect system call the connection request goes from the client to the server in the network then we are just asking from the user the values of a and b from the user so that our client can send these two values to the server again on the client side we use the same function send to to send the data from the client to the server again you can see the the first argument is the socket file descriptor on which the communication is happening then the second argument is the client data in which we have stored the values of a and b so the second argument is a pointer to the buffer which actually contains the data the third argument is the size of the buffer the fourth argument is nothing but null and then the next argument is the server details on which you are sending the data and the last argument is nothing but the constant size of struct socket dr so uh, send to as we have discussed the return value of the send to is the number of bytes sent by the client so we can print the number of bytes sent by the client is these many bytes so after the execution of this send to system call your client has actually sent the data to the server so the next thing your client should do is what it should wait for the reply from the server so that's why we have executed receive from system call again it's a blocking system call so your client will going to be halt here and it will wait until the data arrives from the server the result arrives from the server so receive from is a system call which is invoked on the client side to receive the result from the server again we can print then the number of bytes received from the server because receive from also return value is and receive bytes that is number of bytes received so again you want client to send the next set of values of a and b to the server we can go to the directly to the prompt user label or you can replace this label logic with the help of while loop doesn't matter so again your client will going to ask two values from the user and then it will send these two values to the server it will wait for the the result from the server again it will go to the uh, again it will loop back and it will again going to ask the next two values from the user so your client is also in a kind of infinite loop so next i will run the uh, tcp server as well as the tcp client on the single on the same machine and show you the demo so guys we have just finished with our first server design that is single threaded server design remember that we created a git repository here so in my case it is csc practical slash server design so my git repository was server design and in this directory we uploaded license and readme dot file now because we have completed our first assignment that is single threaded server we will going to upload our data that is upload our assignment to the github account so we have created the sts directory which contains all the code of single threaded server so we'll go inside this directory and we will see that we have tcp client.c and tcp server.c and common.h header file which contains the required structures so our source code our source code comprises of common.h tcp client.c and tcp server.c you should always upload source code on the github account never upload any a.out file any executable binary or any other stuff so we will going to upload our assignment on the 
github account so git status shows so go to their repository directory and execute git status command so in the git status command you see your sts directory which contains the code of the single threaded server but it is an untracked file that is your git doesn't know about the existence of this directory yet so you have to add this directory to the git so execute git add and name of the directory we have added now again execute git status you can see you can see all the files which are present in this directory are turned green so green means these files are ready to be uploaded on the git server so remember we will not going to commit any files which is not a source code file we will go only going to commit our header files as well as .c files so we don't want this executable sts slash server so i will remove this file using command git reset head why i am executing git reset head because i have already added this file to be committed but i want to i don't want to commit this file so i will use git reset head and the name of this file so this file is removed actually it is present in the system but it will not be committed similarly i don't want to commit sts slash client and i don't want to commit this temporary file so again check git status so these files have been removed only these three files will going to be committed now i want to commit to commit just execute git commit so it will ask you to fill this form so in the first line you just have to specify the message that what uh, you just have to specify the description that describe this commit so we have just implemented single threaded server and just save the file using wq so only these files will be committed so it says that these three files have been committed because these are the our first commit therefore create mode means these files have been newly created on the github account so you have committed your changes but your changes have not yet uploaded to the git server so to upload your changes git push origin master is the command it will ask you username and password so to execute this command you need to have an internet connection so type your github username and your password and your changes are online now so the changes have been committed so you can go to your web portal and to your repository server design just refresh the page you can see sts directory uploaded inside this directory you have your source code right so this is the server design so you have uploaded your single thread server on the github account and you can see it will be marked as commit so this is how you will going to commit your changes on the git and i have already explained you that maintaining a github account github account is very important these days if especially if you are a fresher or a college going student because your work on the github account will showcase your ability as well as your knowledge and how good you are at programming so if you have a github account not just have a github account but you have a github account with the work loaded on it to showcase your work then you have a, a very good uh, possibility to get hired by a big giant companies companies uh, favor the students with the github account especially the freshers so take the github account very seriously so guys next i will show you the demo of this project so on the right hand side i will going to run the server program on the same machine only so to run the server and the client program just open two separate terminals so on one terminal i will going to execute the server program so to compile the server program just execute gcc minus g tcp server dot c minus o and the name of the executable in our case it is just server so i have compiled the server program and now i will run the server program so dot slash server 
So a server is started and it is blocked on the select system call that is it is waiting for the client request. Now on the left hand side I will going to execute the client. So just compile the client program using the same format that is gcc minus g tcp underscore client dot c minus o client. So you have compiled the client program and you create an executable client. You just have to execute the client. So here you can see that the connection accepted because when your client started, it sent the connect system call to the server. Server has accepted the connection request from the client and the client is executing on the same machine. So the IP address of the client is also 127.0.0.1. And the client port number is 33416, which is assigned by the operating system. As a developer, when we were discussing the client code, anywhere we have not taken the client port number because the port number to the client process is assigned by the operating system only. So the client is now asking for the values A and B. Let's let's say A is 10 and B is 20. So Pressing the enter number of bytes that is sent by the client is 8 bytes because two integers are 4 plus 4 bytes. And the server has received 8 bytes from the client. And now the server performed the calculation on A and B values and the result is 30. And 30 is one integer. So how many bytes is sent by the server back to the client? That is one integer that is four bytes. So the client has received the result from the server which is the addition of two numbers 30. And again, the client is now waiting for the new set of values from the user. And your server is now waiting for the select system call. No, not at the select system call. It is waiting for the new data from the same client. So I've shown you the data, uh, the demo, how the client and the server communication is happening on the same machine. Your client and the server can execute on different machines. It just as you have to specify the IP address correctly of the server on the client side you have to specify the IP address of the server in the client program correctly. So for our demo purpose we don't have a different machine so we have to execute the client and the server process on the same machine. So if your server runs on a, some distant remote machine and your client runs, on, uh, client runs on another machine then in the client program all you have to do is to specify the server IP address correctly. That's, that's the only change you need to do. Your client and the server program can run on different machines also. Thanks guys. Next we will going to start with our next assignment which is implementing a single threaded server which has the capability to service request of multiple clients at the same time. That will be single threaded server with multiplexing. Thanks guys.